Does anyone know a plumber? I, I fucked up one of those ritual things that everyone is doing now, and my shower is leaking. And also, there's some f faceless guy in my kitchen. My landlord comes tomorrow, and he's going to kill me. Especially because I have a cat, and I'm not even supposed to have pets. It all started when I was drunk messaging a girl on Tinder. And she said the only way we can meet up is if I did this weird ritual thing where I summon a ghost or some shit. That That's not important, though. I think she called it me, me culpa or something. Actually, her exact message was, The decaying flesh will not rest. I am the Alpha and Omega. I have seen burning cities consume the earth. H -H 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 -H, link to ritual instructions. Our souls meet when darkness splits. Me culpa, me culpa, me culpa. <laughs> she was a weird chick. At least, I think she was a girl. I really couldn't see her face. Her picture was just a black background with two shiny dots that kind of looked like eyeballs. You could sort of see some features. It uh, looked like her face was gray, and I really couldn't see her mouth, but she had really good skin, and I wasn't about to go rally for a pizza face, so anyway, I weighed the pros and cons of spooky rituals versus trampoline booty as best as I could on five sh shots of patron. It, it was totally worth it. Uh, I set my cell phone to 3.26 a.m., but since my phone is a 2005 Motorola Razor that was dropped in the toilet sever several times. It went off at 4 a.m. Fuck. Uh, I decided to go through with the ritual anyway. I was also supposed to have a friend during this thing, but my bestie, uh, my bestie recently got incarcerated for selling heroin on the corner of Patterson Park and Eastern Avenue. Shout out to my main man, Roscoe. Anyway. I set up and turned off my alarm, but the moment I turned it off, I drunkenly passed out again. I woke up 20 minutes later and actually got out of bed this time. Uh, stumbling around the room in the dark, because apparently you're not supposed to turn on the lights, because if you do, a ghost will pop out. Ooh, spooky. I was supposed to find a candle and light it, but my hangover just made me trip over one of the several candles I placed on my floor. Eventually, I gave up and flipped the lights on, grabbing a candle from my desk. I squinted out of my window to see what my ghetto Baltimore neighborhood looked at at 4.20 a.m. The street was empty except for some rando wearing a black robe and a giant pointy black hat. He was staring up through the window. I really couldn't see his face. You know, Baltimore has gone to the fucking dogs, first gang wars, and now an updated KKK, for God's sakes. I lit the candle and looked at my phone. I was supposed to knock on my bedroom door 66 times. The 66th knock timed on 604. But since I had fucked everything else up, I did a shaven haircut knock and walked onto my hallway. My bedroom door is opposite of the stairs and looking down. My bedroom door is opposite of the stairs and looking down that dark stairwell is pretty spooky. I thought I saw someone or something move on the uh, lower steps. For the next step, I was supposed to close my eyes and walk forward while chanting. Uh, chanting. Mi culpa, mi culpa, mi culpa, which is Italian for my culpa which is probably some kind of shitty Italian car. I close my eyes and walk forward while talking about Italian cars, but my cat, Fish Dex, ran under my feet, and I ended up tripping over him and falling down the flight of stairs. At some point, the stupid candle went out as I flailed down the stairs, but I was too fucking cussed to care. I rolled up from the ground, groaning and deciding that I would just continue to go through the motions, which meant hiding in a closet and waiting for the ghost to play hide and seek with me. I chose the kitchen pantry because we had some uh, open potato chips in there, so I made my way back. As I stumbled, I heard several soft whispers behind me. I spun around hoping that I was right about fish sticks knowing how to talk, but there was no one there, except for the uh, figure standing in the corner. I stopped, blink and, blinked, and it was gone. I really needed to lay off the pattern. As I honed in on the closet, the alcohol and concussion finally caught up with me, and I stumbled to a stop. Doubling over and vomiting watery patron all over the kitchen floor. Fuck. 
My ass was Landlord Grass. The hellish combination of alcohol, concussion, post-vomit, and looming eviction notice caused my emotions to go haywire. And I unleashed a violent sob, mucus and tears rivering down my face. I heard a noise outside the kitchen. My eyes fell on the kitchen window, and I spied that stupid gang member KKK dude in my backyard still staring at me. I must have looked like an idiot weeping in front of my kitchen pantry, too ashamed to confront him. I just crawled into the pantry and shut the door. It was so cold in there, it damn near froze my man titties off. My air conditioner was probably broken. I definitely needed to call the landlord, but that would mean sedating fish sticks and stuffing him in a suitcase under my bed. At this point, I realized that I needed to reevaluate my life. Maybe I shouldn't drink as much. Maybe I should give fish sticks to a good home. Maybe I should find women with intellect, intellect and poise. Maybe I should move out of my shit neighborhood where KKK people roam around at 4 a.m. After going through an entire existential crisis in my pantry, I decided to say fuck it and end this stupid ritual. That Tinder girl wasn't even that hot anyway. And besides, I still had like 70 more ritual things to complete, including lighting 8 more candles, stabbing a Japanese doll, spinning around in a circle while screaming, you're it, you're it. This was all supposed to culminate in me getting going to my basement, sitting in front of a mirror, and looking into the mirror, but not actually looking into it. Which made absolutely no fucking sense. As I got up to open the pantry door, I heard a low moan coming from behind the door. I froze, and prayed to God it wasn't my landlord. I cracked open the door to see the gang member or KKK guy standing in the kitchen, staring at me. I finally got a good look at him. He definitely didn't have a face.